Namaste, welcome everyone. So it's really cold here. Um, so if you see me shivering or covering myself with a blanket, it's because I'm really cold. Let's come into our comfortable seat. So if you want to make yourself a little bit extra cozy, I always advise laying a blanket on your mat because as we don't sort of need to worry about slipping around and we're so close to the earth, it's quite nice to sit on a nice warm blanket and to lie on a blanket as well. It just adds an extra layer of comfort. It keeps you a bit warmer. Temperatures drop in yin because we're holding the poses in stillness for longer than we usually do. And it is a cooling practice. So therefore, if you have a tendency to get cold, your hands and feet get cold, wear socks, don't wear gloves. <laughs> so layer up and then you can always unlayer as you need to. Let's come into our comfortable seat, Sukhasan. Grinding down through your sit bone, lengthening through your spine. Let's roll your shoulders up towards your ears and then slide them down and away. And hands can be face up or face down, thumb and index touching. Yogi's choice. Our practice today is we're working with the five elements theory, the Chinese in traditional Chinese medicine. And so this week we are working with the element of metal and metal is associated with autumn and the meridians and organs on which it works is the lungs and the large intestine so so um, the qualities that we are working with is letting go, releasing, shedding, just as the leaves fall off the trees. So we touch upon this concept in various practices. And you'll notice that the key theme of autumn is this process of letting go and releasing. Um, harmonizing with the seasons and our natural cycle of ebb and flow, the cycle of nature, the cycle of rhythm. We work in harmony with the seasons. So this is a time for releasing and keeping a hold of that which is precious or valuable or has adds brilliance to our life. So letting go of that which no longer serves us, but retaining the precious minerals and metals and seeing that as an analogy or metaphor for all those qualities within you that you wish to retain, to foster, to grow, to cultivate. The season ahead as we move from the yang of summer into the yin of winter, from this outward looking to the inward looking season when we go into a state of dormancy. That state of dormancy is a time to grow and nourish those things that feed us, that feed our souls. And that's the essence of metal, this shining precious metal. We're going to connect with our breath. So notice the natural rhythm of your breath without trying to change it for the moment. Notice the inhale, the respiration. We're working with the lungs. The inhale. And then notice the expiration, the release of the breath. Working with the lung helps to toxify, to release the unwanted, unneeded 
We're also working with the large intestine, again associated with digestion and elimination. So those two organs, the lungs and the large intestine, both process and release. And now I'm inviting you to connect with an alone vena, alternate nostril breath, to really build this connection with the lungs. So taking your dominant hand, fold in your peace fingers, your index and middle fingers, so that you have your ring and little finger extended and thumb extended, and then bring it to your face. And we're covering our right nostril, so closing the right nostril, inhaling through the left nostril. Then cover the left nostril, holding the breath in, uncover the right nostril, and exhale right. Inhale right. Cover the right nostril, release the left nostril, exhale left. Inhaling left, covering left, exhaling right. Inhaling right, covering right, releasing the left, exhale left. Inhale left. Cover the left, uncover the right, exhale right. Inhale right. Cover the right, uncover the left, exhale left. Releasing your hands. Take a full breath in through both nostrils. Fill the lung space, feel the lungs expand fully. Bring your chin down to your throat as you hold in the breath. Throat lock, Jalandar band. Release when you can hold no more. So lift your chin and exhale slowly, releasing the breath. When the lungs are empty completely, bring your chin to your throat, Jalandar Band, throat lock. Your lungs are empty. Hold for as long as you are able to, that is comfortable for you. And then release the throat lock by lifting the chin. And take a breath in, returning to your natural rhythm. So our lung and large intestine meridians run along the arms. So we're working with our arms mostly today. So the lung is the yin and it starts at the thumb and works all the way along the arms, the shoulder, and then comes to the throat and then it goes deep internally to about just below our uh, large intestine. So we'll start the tapping on the um, for the yin working on the inside of the arm. So let's start at the belly, at the navel, and just move your way up along the sternum. So fold your fingers in and perhaps use your knuckles all the way to the base of your throat, and then cross over the shoulder, and then travel on the inside of your arm. And it matters not which arm you start with. And then tapping all the way down along the lower arm to the wrist to your big thumb, the thumb there. And then let's turn the hand and now we're going to trace the journey back for the large intestine, the yang. So starting at the index finger and let's tap along that hand, lower arm. We're coming to the elbow, so sort of zigzag there for the elbow, upper arm, and to your shoulder and then See if you can reach behind your 
head um, to your back of your shoulder or the back of your neck. And then the large intestine then travels from the back to the collarbone. And then it travels up and ends at underneath your nose. So if you just tap the under, underside of your nose. And then it travels deep internally back down towards the large intestine. So, so if you wish, retrace the steps all the way down just to the side of your belly button. And now let's swap hands and travel in the other direction. So again, for the lung, let's start at the navel and travel up along the sternum to the base of the throat, over to the other shoulder, and then travel down the inside of the arm, all the way to the thumb. And the emotions that we're trying to work on here is releasing grief, loss, sadness. And we're trying to cultivate the ability to let go, to release. So going to your index finger on the return journey for the large intestine, the yang, along the outside side of the arm. And it sort of zigzags around your elbows. It creates a little V here on your elbow before traveling up the back of the uh, outside of the arm to the shoulder. And then it goes to the back, just to the base of the neck, collarbone, and then finishing at underneath the nostrils. And then there's a deeper channel that runs down, as we know, so down the side of the abdomen. So that's stimulating the meridians, the pathways for the chi to flow. Let's come into our first pose. And for our first pose, we're going to come into a child's pose, twisted child's pose. So if you have your blanket on the earth, that's beautiful. So keep you nice and warm. Take your knees as wide as the blanket or as wide as your mat. Big toes to touch. We're going to thread the right arm underneath the left arm here. So coming into child's pose, the eyebrows center directly on the earth or on a cushion or pillow. That's fine. And then reach out with your left arm and thread your right arm underneath your heart space to cross it underneath you. Stay quite low to the earth here. So your left arm is extended and your right arm is threaded underneath you. And you can bring your index and thumb to touch knowing that the meridian pass through the thumb and the index and notice how this affects your breath you'll feel this particularly the lung and it will, the twist benefits the intestine So the lung is connected to grief, the large intestine to sadness. And if when we move from summer to winter, during autumn, we experience low mood, a sense of feeling depleted, depression. These are experiences associated with these meridians and often when we go through change or transition we may have an abil inability to let go of what was before a fear of embracing something new one more breath here in this Child's pose with a twist. Inhale, bring your left hand back towards you and bring out your right arm. Reach down towards the earth with your right arm, extending it longer and thread the left arm underneath your body. Underneath your right arm. And keep your left shoulder 
close to the earth, your eyebrow center is resting on the earth or on a cushion or folded blanket. Your fingers can be in Gyan Mudra from an index touching. And if you want to feel extra cozy and warm, you can always cover yourself with a blanket as you get into a pose. So that you create a cocoon. Sort of preparing for the hibernation that's coming. So you'll notice how in this season things begin to slow down. Despite the change in nature, you may physically and emotionally feel much slower, more sluggish with your emotions, a little more resistant with your emotions. We may find it hard to let go of relationships, of our thoughts, our feelings. One more full breath here in child's pose with a twist. And bring your right hand back towards you. And bring out your left hand. So we're going to move into frog pose. So there's two options, half frog or full frog. And again, I do invite you to have a pillow. Or a bolster ready at the top of your mat on which you can rest your hands and arms if you wish. Because it, this is where we're opening up the hips and it depends on how much openness you have in your hips. So we want to, and I'm going to shift my blanket so that my knee stays. I'll do half pose first. So extend your right leg long and bend into your left knee. So that you create what looks like the letter H with your legs. So your elbows and your hands and heads can be on your bolster, especially if you feel quite high up from the air. Or they can be on directly on the earth. You can also, so you can have your head resting on the back of your hands or you can interlace your fingers and be resting on your forearms. This will depend on how it feels in your lower back. So here we're working with the large intestine. So we're focusing on the experience we're having in our abdomen. So coming closer to the earth is less intense than staying up high. Now, if this feels super comfortable for you and you want to come into the full variation, you can bend into both knees. And then you might notice there's more of a gap. And this between your legs and the earth. And this is where you might want to rest your elbows on a bolster or a pillow. This will feel more intense in the groin. Or you can stay with the half variation, yoga's choice. And I do suggest you pad your knees with a blanket because if it's directly on the floor, it can begin to feel a little painful on the knees, just the skin and the contact of the hard floor. So you'll either be in half variation with this H shape, your Forearms will either be directly on the earth or on a bolster, or you'll have both of the knees in a bend with your knees and ankles aligned. And again, you can have your forearms on the earth or on a bolster and pillow. This is the most intense variation with having both knees in a bend.
So at this point in this pose, connect with what you wish to let go, just as the autumn trees shed their leaves. Think about and connect with what you wish to let go and release. You can support your head or you can have your neck neutral gazing down towards the earth. So I like to create soft fists as you stack them and then rest my eyebrow center on my wrists and my hands. If you're in the half variation, I invite you to swap legs. So perhaps you reach back long with your left leg and then bend into your right leg. And then come into this H shape of frog pose. And again, have your forearms either directly on the earth which is the least intense variation for this half variation, bringing your eyebrow center to the earth. Or you can have your forearms on a bolster or a pillow. The process in autumn is shedding to prepare for the winter. The leaves that fall to the earth nourish the roots of the tree. The You may find after a while that more space is cr created in your hips. There's a softening, a surrendering here. The difference might be imperceptible. We'll have three more breaths here. And if you're in the variation with both knees in a bend in frog, I invite you to move with care. So perhaps reaching back first with one leg and then extending the other leg to the earth. We can move directly into Sphinx pose here. So you can have your hands on the earth. Arms can be parallel. Your forearms can be parallel. Or you can interlace your fingers so that you create a V shape with your forearms. Your gaze can be ahead. Or you can soften your eyebrow center down towards the earth. In which case, take your elbows wider. And rest your eyebrows center on the backs of your hands. That's the crust and crocodile variation. So you'll be in your variation of Sphinx. And if you're supporting yourself with a bolster or a large pillow, it'll be underneath your heart space. 
So rather than having your abdomen on it, you'll have your rib cage chest area supported by the bolster. And again, you can create a little stacking tower with your fists to rest your eyebrow center or use another pillow and cushion. So when you're in Sphinx, you can either be supported by a bolster or a pillow underneath this space here. So where your ribs start and your chest area is, that's what you rest on your pillow or bolster. We've been here for some time. Hopefully you've stayed in your pose until you're waiting for my internet to connect. So remember, if we lose connection, you want to be in your pose for anything between five to seven minutes. And if we lose connection for longer, then you can come out and go into child's pose. If you still have that amount of time, then stay in a pose. From Sphinx Pose, because I know some of you have been in here for a while now, we're going to move into Butterfly Pose. So lifting yourself onto your knees, come up with care because you've been in a gentle back bend. And let's sit back in Charles Pose just for a moment to release the lower back. And when you feel like You've had enough softening here. We're going to move into butterfly pose, supported. So I advise that we have um, a bolster or a large pillow underneath us. So I'm going to create a little stack here. So if you have bricks, you can place them at an angle and then place your large pillow or bolster here. If you don't have bricks available and you have several pillows, and cushions, then you use those to create a little stack. So if I was going to use cushions or pillows, I'd create a little stack. And then I'd place a larger pillow on that stack and that works just as well as having bricks. And then bring your lower back up to the bottom of your pillow or bolster and bring the soles of your feet to touch your knees coming out so you create this diamond shape the precious stone here and we lower ourselves with care and support onto our large pillow or bolster now if your neck feels like it's in a crick here you can always place a folded blanket underneath the back of your head and that will help to act like another pillow for you. Hands away from your body, thumb and index fingers touching gently, the rest of your fingers curl, the soles of your feet together. Reclined butterfly. There are lots of options of making poses accessible at home. So for example, if I only had a couple of cushions, I can still create this feeling underneath my back so that my heart space, my lungs feel open. And we'll be here for quite a while because this is a restful, restorative pose. You might wish to cover yourself with a blanket. If it does not feel comfortable for you to have your feet together and knees open, you can always bring the soles of your feet flat onto the earth with a bend in your knees with your legs being parallel. You don't have to have your knees open with the soles of your feet touching. You can always have the soles of your feet on the earth with the knees parallel to each other.
and breathe into the spaces that you experience in your body here, the expansion, allowing the lung space to be open, expansive, so that your breath can flow with ease, the chi, the energy can move with ease. And with each out breath, release and let go. And with each in breath, focus on what it is you wish to nurture, nourish. Those precious stones, metals. The element of metal is a process of refining. Revealing what is beneath. Revealing the brilliance beneath or within. And butterfly pose is a classic pose of transformation. in which the caterpillar wraps itself in a cocoon to be transformed from within. We're here for another two minutes. In winter, when energy is generally low, we seek to conserve it for, for the needs that we have so that we are not wasteful, that we make best use of our energy and chi. And so this is why autumn is a time for letting go of that which would unnecessarily use up energy during the winter months so that we're not wasting our time or our energy or our attention on things that do not add to us. Three more breaths here. And then with the in breath, placing your hands on the earth. Firstly, drawing your knees in, actually, if you have your legs in a diamond shape, and then placing your hands on the earth. Roll over onto one side. And then with helping hands, rise up. We're going to move directly into caterpillar pose. So we're going to fold forward. So taking your large pillow or bolster and placing it underneath your knees. Again, you can place several cushions if you don't have a large pillow or bolster available. Create a little pile of cushions, legs together. And lengthen. And as you exhale, hinging from the hips, fold as far forward as you can go. Rest your hands either on your legs or your feet or the earth. And rest your eyebrows center on your knees. If it still feels too far away for you to rest your eyebrows center here, use a couple of cushions. And rest your eyebrows center on cushion. Again, you do not have to use props. You will have a different experience without props. 
compared to with props. I invite a more restorative quality with props. And using props of any sort helps us to sustain a pose for that much longer. Soften your shoulders. Soften your jaw. Notice the stillness that you bring to your body, the sense of heaviness, this downward pull of gravity, of energy. This is a time to release attachments so you can make space to form new bonds. Without fear of loss, we often hang on, cling on because we are fearful of loneliness, of isolation, of loss. We're here for one more minute. And yield here, soften. Metal is often thought of being hard and tough and unyielding. Yet we know we can shape it, mold it, soften it by applying warmth. by applying some gentle pressure. Three more breaths here. And then as you inhale, begin to unfurl your spine one vertebrae at a time by walking your hands back towards your body. From here, we're going to move into a supported bridge pose. And you are invited to use bolster or your cushions or pillows here. So come directly down to the earth and have your cushions and your bolster or pillow ready underneath your knees and reach for it with your hands. And then in order to place it underneath your lower back, lift your hips and pelvis and then adjust your bolster into the position underneath your sacrum. So you want the middle of your tailbone to be in the middle of the bolster so that you are supported on the heaviest part of your hips and pelvis. But the heaviest part is resting directly on your bolster or your pillows or cushions. So you can be higher or lower from the earth. And then the option for your arms here is to take them overhead and either have your arms in a cactus with an elbows, with the elbows bent, or extend your arms and reach overhead. So 
so that we're working into our lung meridian here. And again, if you are getting cold, be sure to cover yourself with a blanket. Two blankets are always really welcome in yin. One for below your body and one to cover your body. If your back begins to feel uncomfortable, check how you are positioned on your cushions or bolster and readjust. And perhaps bring your arms alongside your body to reduce the overhead tension. So check whether adjusting your hips and pelvis, lowering your um, pelvis to the earth by removing the bolster or the cushions might help, or bringing your arms down away from being overhead may also help. And again, soften with each out breath. Notice where the heaviness is in your body, where the space is. And I invite you always to close your eyes. Cover your eyes, perhaps with an eye pillow or a small scarf. And connect with this precious metal at the deep within, just as it is deep within the earth's core, it's deep within you. We'll be here for one more minute, so check that you are comfortable. Make any small adjustments that you need to stay in stillness for the last minute here. Notice how your mood is shifting. If you have entered this rest and digest mode. So this digestion, this process through which the body passes of moving from activity to stillness. Of moving through from taking in to letting go. Three more breaths here, and I invite you to move with care. Bring your arms alongside your body, and then very gently lifting your hips and pelvis and removing your bolster, your cushions, your pillows. 
And then for a moment, just rest here with this bend in your knees. And place your right hand on your lower abdomen and your left hand over your heart. Rest here for a moment to allow the spine to realign. We're going to move into a twist, spinal twist. So we want to do that with care and mindfulness. So bend into your knees and lift your feet. And perhaps you place them on your cushions, your bolster, your pillow for the moment. Again, as part of this slow transition. And then let's hug your knees in for a moment, squeezing them tight towards you. And then move slowly on your lower back from left to right to ease out your lower back. And we're going to move into a twist over to the right first. So we'll take the legs over to the left and we take the gaze over to the right, sorry, to be a little bit clearer. So we're coming into a very gentle twist today. And again, you can have your pillow or bolster alongside you on the left. Extend your left leg long. Take hold of the outside of your right knee and then drop that right leg across your body over to the left. And mine is resting on my bolster or pillow. So you can come onto your left hip your, to help you with this. Then turn and gaze over towards the right. If this doesn't feel comfortable for your neck, you can bring your head back to center from neutral or over slightly to the left. Feel and experience the expansion across your heart space and the twist across your abdomen. So working with the lung and the large intestine directly here in this twist. Remembering to cover yourself with a blanket. If your body temperature is dropping. Moving through the season of autumn, working with the element of metal that directly affects the lung and large intestine meridians. And the emotions that are captured here, it's grief, sadness, loss, And we may be hanging on, clinging on with an inability to let go by using our practice of yin. We can begin to counteract these effects on us, lifting our mood, helping us to connect with the self so that we no longer feel isolated. Allowing us to let go without fear. One more breath here. Hug your right knee in towards you. And then release the right leg long. And with minimum fuss and disruption to your nervous system, let's cross the bolster and cushions over onto the right side. 
bring in the left knee. And as we exhale, lower the left leg onto your bolster or cushions or onto the earth, coming onto your right hip. And again, you can gaze over to the left with your head. If that does not feel comfortable, you can bring your head to center, closing your eyes and noticing how the breath moves through your body here in this reclined supine twist. This time of year when our immune systems may feel low and vulnerable. Taking time to restore your health. Knowing that we may feel physically depleted in this season. Taking in the nourishment that you need. Taking time to rest when you can. This is the season to slow down, to begin to move to a place of stillness. Using the in-breath to nourish. Using the out-breath to eliminate. And making space by getting rid of what no longer serves us, what that, of that which has been feeling like a burden. So that we take forward only that which is purposeful, valuable to us. One more breath here. And with helping hand, bringing the left knee back to center, hugging it in, and then releasing your leg long and preparing for your Shavasana. So we can end our practice with your Shavasana. So make sure you are comfortable here covering yourself with a blanket, an eye pillow. And Shavasana isn't a time for sleep. It's a time for deep rest. It has a restorative quality to it. You maintain conscious awareness. It is that liminal space between wakefulness and sleep. When you maintain a connection with the physical self and the earth, yet you begin to let go of thoughts. 
You can do that by focusing on your breath, the in and out breath, focusing on the sensations in the body, letting go and releasing tension from the toes, feet, ankles, lower legs, knees, upper legs, hips and pelvis, abdomen, lower back, chest, middle and upper back, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, fingers, your fingers and hands, toes and feet, softening, relaxing, letting go, shoulders, neck, jaw, softening, letting go, cheekbones, the top of your head, the back of your head, softening, letting go, your whole body, softening, letting go, releasing, Staying in this state of Shavasana for at least another three to five minutes. And then rising when you are ready. And then closing your practice with Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Whenever you are ready. I thank you for joining me. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Mm.